Hey everyone, it's Celeste. I haven't posted in a while. Sorry about that. It's been raining here in Northern California for a bit and it's finally about 70 degrees out. So I'm going to come and post a little video that's just going to talk about how you can take a pot that looks horrible like this. I'm going to deconstruct it and then I'm going to put it back together again so that it looks nice. Um, about the only thing that looks good about this pot is it's got this nice trailing orthocapensis right here so you can see this, this trailing plant which is super pretty although a little long and overgrown um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this apart now and then I'm gonna illustrate some things to think about as you are putting a pot back together okay so here we are I've taken apart the pot um, as you can see I have pulled out a lot of the leaves um, believe it or not there's actually a ton of fire glass in there which is really really cool most of the leaves out you can see that some of the stems I left in I'm really not worried about that some of them are actually producing babies already so you can see this guy right here uh, I'm just gonna leave those in there all they'll do is help with that the final look of the pot they're just gonna fill it in a little bit more so you know again you don't have to be perfect when when you're doing this um, you're just really pulling out anything that looks too long and leggy and looks yucky um, you'll know, notice a couple of these plants I actually kept. Um, this watch chain I kept in here. Uh, mainly it's because this one can be a little tender when you pull it out. I left that Orthona capensis like I talked about. Um, believe it or not, there's a burrow's tail in here. So look at that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. A couple of these other trailing plants I'm leaving. And it's just mainly because those are harder to get to trail like that and I like that look. Um, I will clean up this orthocapensis down here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out just uh, that's a little too much. <laughs> I mean, it'll actually grow healthier and fuller up at the top if I pull that out. So the main thing is when you have something like this is you're going to just want to you know, refresh the top a little bit. So all I've done is I've taken my multi-tool and I've just poked into the soil as much as possible. Again, I'm going to be working with cuttings and so I need to be able to push them down into the soil in order for them to stay rooted. So all you're going to do is just you know, shove down in there like that, just so that it gives you a little bit of that ability to poke down in. Um, think of it as just like floral arrangement, right? Um, also move the fire glass around a little bit. And the reason why is because any of the detritus or leaves or gunk that was sitting inside of there that I wasn't able to pull out that's just going to refresh it a little bit it, it weirdly it just drops down to the bottom so it's going to leave more of that fire glass across the top uh, so as i'm putting the cuttings in then it'll be less of a challenge okay so let's talk about a couple of things that you don't want to do so it can be pretty intimidating when you have a pot like this and you're looking at it and thinking okay what am i going to do with this pot um, one of the first things that I want you to remember is, um, and you don't have to do it this way, but it is how I do it because it just makes designing a little bit easier. But any of the cuttings that you took out, try to group them together. Um, group them together by colors, group them together by types. So you can see there's a couple of different ones here, um, but they're mainly just fillers. Um, you can see I've got some aeoniums here up at the top. Some more little sedums, right? graptivariums. Um, so all I'm doing is I'm grouping them together. It just makes it easier when I'm putting the pot together later. One of the things that you don't want to do is put one of your big main ones right smack in the middle like this. Uh, it's going to be really, really hard and awkward when you're looking at the pot and you can see this pot is backed up against the fence here. So you're only going to be viewing this from one angle. Now, if I was looking at this, you know, where I could walk around it from a 360 standpoint, I might put some, I might put it right in the center, but because I'm not going to be doing that because I'm going to only see this from one angle, I'm really going to want to offset it. So putting it in the center, if you do that, then it means all the plants that are going to be behind it, you're really not going to see those and it's a waste. So you don't want to do that. So you're really going to want to put this one of the ones over here in the back and you'll notice that I offset it over to the side. So one of the weird things about design and the way that people view anything is you want to do something that's called um, odds, right? So you, you want to think in terms of ones, threes, fives, uh, anything that's from an odd perspective, you don't want to have a bunch of matchy matchy. So I'm going to show you really quickly why it looks bad. 
So say I did two of the blue elf, and that's what basically these are, right? So <laughs> and I'm going to try to get it to stand up. Okay, so you've got two blue elf. Okay, they just looked dumb, right? <laughs> just, that doesn't look good like that. Uh, you can see immediately I've created this kind of weird gap in the center. It's going to be very hard to fill from a design perspective. You're not going to want it to look like that. So instead, what I would do is I would actually just have either the big one like that and then fill in around it or put this one right next to it so that I could fill it in and make it even bigger. Um, but I would put it literally where I'm grouping them together so you can see how much better that looks. And again, the reason why is because your eye, whenever anything is matching, it's going to want them to be the exact same size, exact, I mean, perfect, like match, match. You're never going to get that with plants. They're never going to match. So you don't want to do that. You want to do use ones, threes, and fives. Your eyeball won't do that. Um, anybody that's viewing the pot won't naturally look for things to match and won't feel like it's off if everything's in odds. So that's one of the things that you want to think about. The next thing that you want to think about is, again, you want to offset, right? So this is going to be the main viewing angle, but even if you viewed it from here, you can see it's slightly offset. So you're going to come around and you're going to look at the pot from different angles. This just happens to be the main viewing angles that you're going to see this pot from. So I'm keeping this blue elf off to the side here. This pot is a little bit in the shade. Blue Elf is one of the um, types of aloes that they can actually handle this, right? Um, when you put them in the shade like this. And so that's why I tend to use these guys in these pots over here because they can handle this better uh, than some of the different plants who that wouldn't be able to handle it. Now, funny enough, um, as the sun starts to shift during the summertime, this pot will be more and more and more uh, in the sunlight. And so I actually will put in some that can handle it more up here towards the front. Okay, so we're a little further along. And now what I've done is I've added in a mangave. This is called the kaleidoscope mangave. When they get upset, uh, let's see here, you can see they get this bright pink edge. This is actually going to get even, even more um, bright pink as it gets more and more stressed. This is a pup from one of my other plants. This will actually get <laughs> eventually three feet wide um, and it'll get fairly tall. It's a different texture so you'll see it kind of it will do this where it will hang over. So I have the one the spiky texture in the back with the blue elf. Then I put this mangave and again, right now, it doesn't look the greatest, right? Again, I'm just putting the larger plants towards the back. This is a Blushing Beauty Aeonium. Those get very, very big. And again, right now, it doesn't look great because you're seeing the height difference. But as I continue moving more and more forward, I'm putting in some of the plants that I really, really like that I want to see. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to fill it in with things like jades. Uh, and then that's going to help with that height difference in between and it'll help showcase some of these. So I keep moving forward and I'll show you each step of the way. We're a little further along now. You can see I've added in more of the plants and this pot is gonna be pretty full. So I'm gonna be, a couple of things that I did. Uh, you can see that I'm adding in the jade, right? So I'm fixing the height difference between the blue elf in the back and the jade. So this is just a, a normal jade. I'm packing in, though this won't end up right where it is, right? You can see, though, I'm going to push this up eventually. So there's going to be more that's going to be inside here. So it's going to push that Blushing Beauty Aeonium in. I've tucked over some on the side as well. Blushing Beauty Aeoniums get pretty tall, and they'll fill in pretty rapidly. Um, and they do this really beautiful, like, purple stress when they're upset. Um, so that'll be super nice. The way that you're going to think about this is this is your Thriller. These are thrillers, right, that are poking out the top. And I can use two different textures here. So my eye, when I'm looking at this pot, isn't gonna try to make these textures match. That's, what's, that's what works about this, right? Then you're gonna use fillers. These are your fillers, right? You're gonna use these aeoniums. You're looking for things that are fat and wide uh, to kind of fill out that texture in the pot. And then the last piece is, is you have spillers. That's what these are. That's why I didn't touch those, although you can see down here I did clip it back so that they would grow better. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna always have in your pots thrillers, fillers, 
and then spillers. Now this is not the cutest right here, along here, so you can see I'm starting to add in some of these plants and I'll continue filling this out and add again more from a fill perspective. But you can see I'm using a lot of the green towards the back where I'm not gonna look at this a lot. And then I'm starting to put a lot of the color towards the front, which is where you're gonna actually view the pot from. And I'm using different colors. So I don't like it when it does a matchy matchy thing again. So I'm using some orange, I'm using some of that red. We got some of the purple in here, some of this green, although this one will actually turn a bit on the red side, a lot of the purple again. So you're just using different colors, different textures, trying to keep things from not matching too much as you're putting the pot together. Don't worry about these things being super close together. That's the thing about um, succulents. They don't actually care. Uh, they actually like a little bit of root competition and they'll grow just fine, nice and close together like that. Plus you'll have a really full pot. You have to remember when you put these plants in, especially as cuttings, one of the first things they're gonna do is they're gonna kind of um, sink in on themselves a little bit. It's just they're trying to protect themselves because they don't have any roots yet to be able to get water. And so while they're establishing those roots, they're going to come in a little bit. So you want to pack the plants really, really tight. Otherwise, you're going to end up with gaps in between and it won't look very good. Um, so I'm going to keep going and then I'll show you in a minute what the finished product looks like. That's our finished product. So again, you can see I've used the blue elf towards the back. The kaleidoscope mangave eventually that'll have to come out because it'll get too big but it's kind of neat and it'll um, throw off some real pretty pink which is going to match a bunch of the different pinks that i have in here um, you can see i've done the filler so all of this is fat and round going inside of this pot go up at this angle so you can see it a little better and again i'm just working from the highest point the top moving my way down so the jades are towards the back. The jades started to be too green, so I added in some of these little teacup aeoniums, right? Okay. The blushing beauties, which will get big and tall, those will fill out along with these jades. A different jade was used. This is a crassula undulata. It's just a different texture than the normal garden variety jade that you've got here. This is also a jade. Added in some of the aeoniums. And this is one that it's um, a red sunset is what it's called. Super pretty. It's cupping a little bit just because it's starting to get warmer. It's a little more sensitive to the heat, so it's going to like it over here where it's a lot cooler. So you've got that blushing beauty aeonium over here. Added in some of the orange for the pop. Moved some of the trailing plant over here. Um, this stuff is semi-invasive called orthocapensis, so all I'm doing is using the weight of these plants to hold it in, it will root. So you don't have to worry about that when you have those, those root extremely easily. The rest of it, I've covered up some of this that didn't look really great um, at the beginning with some of this, some of the shorter, where the ortho, orthocapensis that has uh, the little bulbs on it up towards the top. So it's covering up some of these legier stems. And so all of this will start to bush out more. Um, and then you can see I've also cut it, trimmed it, thinned it quite a bit. And so it's actually going to thicken up um, in this entire area. Put most of my color towards the front. So you can see a lot of this is along here. Super cute. A few more of the different varieties of aeoniums that I've got. Just popped those in. And that's what that looks like now. You know, when you're when you're working on your pots, don't be intimidated. Um, you, you know, it, it takes a while to get used to combining the different colors together, the different types of plants. You'll learn a lot about how they grow, best way to use them. Um, don't be intimidated by it. You can always yank this back out and put in however you would like. That's part of the fun of this. Think of it as almost like floral arrangements, right? And whatever you don't like, you can come by and you can change it and have it look like something else in the future. Okay, so um, hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you uh, as you're looking at some of your pots in your backyard. Um, again, this is all done with cuttings.
and it's something that you can easily do. The plants can handle it, um, especially this time of year uh, for my area. I'm in zone 9B, so this is the perfect time of year when it isn't super wet and uh, the soil has dried out a bit. I can use cuttings. I can put in these type of arrangements, uh, make these type of pots for the backyard. Uh, it should last and look nice for probably about six months, and then I'll be back out here redoing the pot again, but that's part of the fun of it. So hopefully this content's been helpful for you as you're starting to work on your backyards. Um, if it is, you know, like and subscribe. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye.